very much indeed as ever for joining us, Erwin, well, on a busy day for you. Walk us through the latest quarter. Now, there was a drop in sales from the previous quarter sequentially. Can you tell us why that was? So, Andy, good morning, and thank you for having me on. And uh, as I talked to David before, number one, we're a Canadian cannabis company. Our Canadian cannabis sales are up 23%. We made over $10 million EBITDA from our Canadian cannabis sales. Our overall sales were down because of our CC Pharma. And, you know, if you look at our sales year over year, we're up 243% on cannabis sales year over year, which I think, as I said to David, it's important to compare. Our, our overall sales were down in CC Pharma in Europe, in Germany, and that had to do with medications that were not delivered to 13,000 drugstores and orders being closed and, you know, uh, surgeries not being, you know, had, etc. So that's not what mm -hmm. where we make our money. CC Pharma for us is a distribution business that will ultimately distribute medical cannabis to those 13,000 drugstores. But I think where investors are missing, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, surprised why our stock is down, what investors are missing is mm -hmm. this here. Our cannabis business continues to grow in Canada, up 23%. Mm -hmm. We have seven brands. We've introduced multiple new products. And with that, the illicit market for the first time, you know, is the same size as the legal market. And, and my other thing is mm -hmm. this year, we are making money. We are profitable. Um, you know, got good sure. cash flow. So with that, I, I'm, I'm not sure what mm -hmm. investors, you know, are missing. <laughs> I know. It's a tough one. I know. Frustrating when you're happy with the numbers and the stock comes under pressure. Let me ask you, though, um, your gross mark. I mean, this is the worry, obviously, in Canada. Too much supply. Your gross margins on cannabis operations, David notes, slipping. I mean, you're doing well, but you're doing well with value branded products. You and other companies have had to meet the consumer demand for lower priced cannabis. So that can't be great if your margins are under pressure. You know, our margins are not necessarily slipping. I'm not sure what David, you know, is referring to. Our margins are still up 50%, okay, at 50% margins. And with that, you know, Andy, as I come back and look at the Canadian cannabis market, you know, first and foremost, you know, for the first time, as I said, there's a $2.5 billion illicit market to be able to take market share. Today, there's 800 mm -hmm. stores in Canada. And with that... There will be 3,000 stores, so there's tremendous opportunity for us to grow. And with that, with mm -hmm. the three, we have seven great brands today, which we will continue to come out with new products. You know, the other thing you talked about is, listen, we're not out there with drinks yet because we haven't perfected it. We're not out there with edibles yet. We haven't perfected it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, now, but... I mean, this is a, a market that's showing signs of being glutted, Erwin, broadly. I mean, there's more than 500 licensed producers in Canada. More than 50 are selling into the recreational market. I mean, how are you going to manage your supply with uh, demand when there's so many other players supplying the Canadian market? And that's a great question. At the end of the day, Andy, brands are going to win. Brands that consumers can resonate with. Brands that consumers trust, brands that have great innovation, mm. whether it's the strain, whether it's the quality of the product, whether it's the price, and brands that can get distribution, and how are we going to support these brands? And Apria will do that. I mean, we have our brand Good Supply, Soleil, Rift. And listen, cannabis in Canada has only been around for two years, and we have built tremendous, tremendous brands in a matter of those two years. So I think, hey, being as the number one supplier today, having the share that we have today in, in Ontario with a 14% share and trying to you know get to a 25% share, I think there's going to be a consolidation. And those 500 LPs that you've talked about, a lot of them are going to go away, but a free will mm -hmm. be there. And, and the other oh, thing is, Andy, what I talked about on our, call, on, uh -huh. on our call today, we are that low-cost producer. We continuously drive down the cost of producing mm -hmm. our product and that you know this is the fourth consecutive quarter we're now below a dollar mm -hmm. uh, sorry say that again that's your production cost <clears throat> excuse me uh, below a dollar you said or what below a dollar yes i i don't want to belabor it but i'm just looking here at your adjusted 
gross margin cannabis gross margin was just under 50 percent down from just under 43 percent sorry down it was just under 50 percent down from just under 53 percent in the prior quarter so it looks like quarter on quarter your gross cannabis margin slipped and, and it slipped because andy and you can't look at quarter by quarter and down you know a few percentage points that is because is we're spending more marketing dollars introducing products that is, we're coming out with you know new innovation, new products, and different mix and different margins. So, you know, my mm -hmm. objective is this year, you know, at a 50% margin, and we'll continue to get that margin, you know, increased. The other thing is, what we continue to get is our cost of products coming down in you know the low 60 mm -hmm. plus cents of cost to produce our products. You know, the other big thing which I've talked about this morning is this here how we're going to get to what we grow with what we sell and taking costs out of our grow that ultimately our supply chain will be able to be much more efficient, mm -hmm. much more efficient in our purchasing, procurement and supply. You know, we have the ability to grow mm -hmm. 265,000 kilos. So we will be that low cost Whoa. producer. <laughs> exactly. That's amazing. 200. Sorry, 265 tons of pot you could grow per year right now, roughly? Kilo, exactly. We could grow that. And today, Andy, we're growing about 195,000 to 200,000. So with the growth in the okay. Canadian market, we have tremendous potential to grow a lot more, and we will. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry to belabor it, Erwin. I know you walked through it, but um, I mean, it, we are showing signs of an oversupplied market and you say brands will pull us through. And of course, that's the classic consumer products strategy. But you're so restricted on your advertising and your sponsorship. I mean, you walk into a pot shop in Toronto, there's no display of products. There's just the packaging and it's really very discreet. How can you build brands when you're so restricted on the marketing? And that's a good point. And that's something where the LPs have to lobby together to get to the Canadian government to allow us to advertise. And not that we should advertise, you know, where you should be able to live there and buy cannabis. It's what's the right purpose of cannabis today, the whole educational piece about it. And no different than mm -hmm. the liquor company. The drug companies are able to go out there and advertise their products and educate the consumer. And, and I got to tell you, Educating the consumer here helps get them away from the illicit market, the quality that we go through, the regular regulatory. If you think about it today, mm -hmm. there's two hundred and there's two point five billion dollars of cannabis sold through the illicit market. Think about the tax dollars that the government is losing mm -hmm. by that not being sold through a regulated market. So yes, it got to yeah. change. The Canadian government got to make some changes in the way we market our brands. And with that, mm -hmm. you know, from a social media standpoint, from an Instagram standpoint, getting out and talking about our products is the way that we're going to drive consumers' brands towards brand equity. And, you know, I, Andy, I built a consumer mm -hmm. package company, and my plan is to build out our brands here.